Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the CGUCB podcast. I'm Mitch, and today we're going to be filming the first of a small series that I'm going to do on uh, shooting for beginners. And today what we're going to be talking about is some pieces of equipment and kit that I think every shooter, whether they're just starting out or have been shooting for a while, uh, should carry with them anytime they go to the range or any sort of shooting event. Um, and so that kit is the range bag. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the range bag itself, things to carry inside of it, and what all to carry alongside it. Because the range bag is not just something that you just throw a bunch of stuff in and grab it when you go. I mean, it is, but there's also some secondary and tertiary items that you want to keep nearby your range bag so when you grab your range bag, you grab those as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the range bag, everything inside of it, and those secondary and tertiary items that I think you should also carry with you. So we're going to start in the center compartment. We're going to move to the front two, um, the front two pockets, and then we're going to go to the sides, and then finally the rear. So let's get started. So first off, the bag itself. This is a Midway USA range bag. I got it for Christmas about, I want to say roughly between eight and 10 years ago, and I've been using it since then. Um, it served me very well. It's got a lot of features that I like. Um, at one point it had a shoulder strap that hooked into the, these D clips right here. However, after a couple years, the hooks were kind of, they're made out of pop metal and ended up breaking. So I don't use it anymore, but for the most part, I really never used it because I've got these nice convenient little handles that um, I can still carry it with and it not be a burden. Plus, whenever I go to the range, like once I set it down, it's usually not going to move from that spot. Um, so for your center compartment, we've got these two zippers on the tether, so I can just grab it. Undo both of them at the same time. It's also got a system loop closure at the end to keep it relatively closed when you have, have your zippers open. Um, first thing you're going to notice is it has a center tote, and on either side it has a has one of these. Well, this is a handgun case, um, or at least that's what I use it for. It's got a zipper closure. It's got like the synthetic felt on the inside to protect the finish of your handguns. Um, it'll fit two full size handguns um, with lights, not so much with optics, but. If you if you're running compacts or subs, you can fit three of them in here. But I I've only got full size handguns, so I only ever fit two. Um, so total, you can fit four handguns in this thing. Just like I said, you got the one on this side, and you got the one on this side. Now your tote that comes in the center, which I'll put it out there so y'all can see it. Um, this is real handy to have. Um, and one, you can take it with you wherever you go so you don't have to carry the whole bag. Um, and you can just put the necessities in here. Um, in this particular one, I have in the first, now this is divided up into a couple of compartments, as you can see. Um, so my first compartment, I keep lens cleaning cloth for any optics um, in case they get dirty and you, and you want to wipe it. Something good to keep. And then for for convenience sake for right now, I have the sunshade to my Burris off my precision rifle that I keep in here as well. Um, in case I go go out and it's a sunny day and I don't have any, any shelter to be under, um, I can use that and keep some of the, some of the glare down. Um, the other thing I keep in there is a, a backup pair of Ear, Ear Pro in case I use mine, my primary ones for um, another event where I don't need my range bag or if I'm bringing somebody, or in the other unlikely case, somebody shows up to the range, they forgot the Air Pro, I've got a set that they can borrow, and um, I'm not gonna cry if I don't get that. Um, in the next compartment, I, it came with this. Now this is a, a brass bag. It's got a, kind of like a grid pattern on the, or a, not a mesh, but like a, a screen built into the bottom so you can put it all in and all your dirt and everything falls out. 
Um, it's got a little hook so you can hook it onto a uh, to your belt clip. It's got a closure on the top, and just yeah, just put your brass in it as you go. Um, which reminds me, anytime you're at the range, it's always a good idea to clean up after yourself, especially your brass. Uh, or if you don't want to keep the brass, there's always going to be um, a brass gremlin at the range who wants all your brass all the time. Um, so if you don't hand load and you don't want to keep it, just clean it up and give it to them. Um, or if you hand load, keep it and reload it. The options are endless. Um, anyways, in my next compartment, I keep usually the ammo that I'm using for the day. So like, uh, I got this, this is just some uh, Fioki, they call it can munition. This is uh, yeah, 115 grain, nine mil FMJ. Um, these come 90 round, they're usually sealed on top, got like a little pop tab. Um, and they're airtight when you get them. I thought that they were pretty cool. And uh, this is good for like long-term storage of ammunition. But I, the ammo shoots all right. Um, I think it's a good, I think it's a novel idea. Don't really think it'll take off very well. Sometimes it does, sometimes new ideas don't, but it's one of the things. The other thing I, I've got in here is um, some 556, because that's what I'm shooting mostly nowadays. Um, which most most people going to the range nowadays are gonna have something of 556 five, anyways. So that's neither here nor there. But like I said, that's usually my ammunition for the day. Um, moving on to the side, let's move that to the side. So in my front pockets here, we'll start over here. Now this one is strictly for my Air Pro. So I have a, these are my primary Air Pro. These are a set of Howard Lake Impact Sports. Um, I got the, I bought these used uh, from a guy I worked with. Uh, he sold them to me for like 20 bucks. Um, they've got, you know, microphones up front, they're noise canceling. So when a gunshot rings out, it'll actually mute it for the split second. Um, and you can amplify any ambient noise with them as well. They're really nice. Um, these retail, I think, around 50 or 60 bucks, roughly. Um, I think they're worth it for the money. Well, probably need to change batteries now. These things were left on. But it's also got a aux port right here. Um, in the event you want to hook up like a phone or something, listen to music while you're also at the range. Um, these aren't combo setups. They don't have they're not set up to be used with a mic or anything like that um but these are well worth the money in my opinion so always 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 have your pro and on top of that always have high pro i do not have any in this range bag as i broke my last set and i'm um waiting on my new set to come in um, which i'm going to get a set of the new loophole uh shooting glasses which look really good they run about 150 bucks a pair um, and they have changeable lenses and whatnot. So when I get those, I'll do a, um, I do a quick overview of them. Um, so you guys can see, but anyways, moving on to the next pouch. Um, this is probably the stuff that's kept in here is some of the most important stuff you should always carry with you to the range aside from your, your ear pro. Um, so this one, I've got a screwdriver set. This one's a Wheeler, uh, precision micro set. Um, it's got a bunch of different uh, tool bits. So you've got your like Phillips head, your flatheads, your Torx, your Allens, um, and some specialty bits. Mainly for doing small stuff like scope mounts, um, accessories, things like that. Good, good to keep around in case you need it. As well as a full size um, screwdriver kit, but I have that in my uh, my actual carbine case because um, that's where it lives for the most part, so you don't go to the range without that case in either. Um, the other thing I keep in here, especially when I'm shooting an AR, is a bulk carrier. Now, preferably you'd want to keep a full carrier group. However, um, I don't have a full carrier group to keep right now, as both of mine are being used. Um, so I just have this carrier. Um, and the reason I'm, I recommend keeping one is because most Fail, most parts failures you're going to have in the AR type rifle is going to be in your bolt carrier. Um, it's either going to be a gas ring failing, it's going to be a firing pin, or it's going to be a gas key. It's usually going to be one of those three. Um, more common than not, especially on your 
your lower grade bolt carriers, not the whole group, so just the carrier itself, is they'll use um, they'll use subpar fasteners for your gas key, and they'll also um, not stake them properly. Like this one's a good example of one that's not staked properly, but it's what I have, so I'm going to use it. Um, and I am waiting on my tools so I can properly stake these and not have to worry about it. And the reason why is because after a while, eventually, especially if they use the wrong fasteners, one of the heads of the screws are going to shear and it's going to break the seal between your key and your carrier. And that's going to allow gas to leak out of the carrier, which will cause the rifle to short stroke. And if it's bad enough, it'll actually cause it to not cycle at all. Um, telltale signs would be a lot of carbon buildup right in the front of, or in the back of your gas, your gas key. But anyways, let's not go off too far on a tangent on that. Um, the other thing I keep in here is a microfiber cloth. These are good to have, um, especially if you're out with a gun you really want to keep the finish pretty nice on so you can wipe it down afterwards and just give it a quick, a quick wipe, wipe the carbon off. Like let's say you've got a, uh, a stainless or a nickel plated uh, revolver or a nice hunting rifle with some beautiful bluing on it. And, you know, you want to keep it nice and clean and keep the the um, fingerprints off of it and all that. So these are also really good to keep on hand. So moving on, we're going to go to these pouches on the side. So as you can see, you've got an open pouch, or I'm sorry, an open pouch right here, um, and a closed pouch here. So in this one, so y'all can already see it, I keep a bipod in here. And the reason I keep a bipod is um, you may go and let's say you forget your front rest or you don't have a front rest, so you go and you go on a sight in a rifle or just shoot for groups. Well, a bipod is probably the most useful tool you can have for that. Uh, it'll allow you, you know, you'll mount it to the front of the gun, it'll give you more support and all the benefits that you would assume to come with a bipod. This particular one is a Harris um, 6 to, I want to say it's like a, no, yeah, it's like a 6 to 9 inch bipod. Um, the legs come out, they're spring loaded, and they'll pop back in. Um, it's got, uh, not pitch, but um, I don't remember what it's called, roll, let's say, for y'all. Um, I have a pick rail adapter on it just because I can swap it between my hunting rifle or any other rifle I have that's got a front sling stud or a rifle with a pick rail. Um, so yeah, this is always handy. I'll always keep one on me or in my range bag whenever, whenever I go to the range. Um, this is probably the single most important tool to always have in the range in this pocket. Your staple gun. Pretty self-explanatory. Can't put your targets up if you don't have a staple gun. Um, I use a a target stand made out of one by twos that I built myself for my IDPA, my EPSIC uh, cardboard silhouettes. So I'll post it up with this, then I'll put my uh, target on it if I'm shooting for bullseyes that day. Um, so yeah, this is real handy to have. Um, and if you go to like a public range, you become like Superman because half the people out there don't even think to bring your staple. And then the other thing to keep spare staples. I couldn't tell you how many times I've gone to the range with a staple gun and I run out of staples. So always keep spares. Redundancy is always a good idea. Except for with women, then it's not. So, that's those pockets. Yeah, let me get close. The next pocket is one on this one. Now, you see it has an ID slot or pouch right here. I don't really use it because I've never been around where I live. Everybody who goes to any sort of public range, I've never seen them actually carry a range bag. They usually got ammo cans. So, it's pretty easy to spot where mine is um, on the range. But, this pocket I usually keep for auxiliary items that are like, if I need to take it with me on the range, but are not necessary for the most part. 
The only exceptions being I keep a knife um, in case I forget a pocket knife, which you should always carry a pocket knife, um, but always have a knife in your range bag in case you forget your pocket knife. Uh, knives are pretty useful. It's kind of self-explanatory for guys. Um, whether you got to cut something up or you forgot to bring a target vacuum for your target stand, so you find like a big old piece of cardboard in the trash, so you, you know, bring it out, cut it to fit, and use it from there. The other thing I keep, if I can grab it, is a scope level kit. And the reason I keep this is I've had it to where I put a scope in a mount, forgot to tighten that, tighten it down, and torque it. And after shooting, the scope mount came loose. And so what happened, the scope started walking back and then rotating. So this allowed me to get back level and then use my, my handy dandy screwdriver set to torque it back down and continue on. So granted it was a lot of ammo wasted, but I had the tools to remedy the situation. So always good to have, because you never know if you're not gonna, if you don't tighten it enough and you know, let's say it's a bumpy road all the way to the range and the vibration causes your screws to back out and finally shooting it causes it to back out enough that your scope starts moving in the mouse. So, always a good idea to have a level kit. All right, and on to the last pouch. Save the best for last. Nah, nah, but it is the biggest. So, we got one of these. Um, so in this pouch, I keep a couple of things. So the first thing I keep Targets. Targets are always good. Whether it be the shoot and see targets, if I'm shooting a red dot and can't quite make out the pattern or make out where the shots are landing, or my my grid patterns, zero targets. Um, targets are all you always, always, always need targets. And by the way, when you take targets out, don't take glass. That's a pain to clean up. And then people don't want to have to deal with that when they're walking down range, especially like me, because I'm bad. I'll wear flip flops to the range. And if I got to walk down there around broken glass and I cut my foot, I'm going to be mad. There's with plenty of other people that are wearing flip flops, they get mad too. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Plus, that shit is not. I know some people aren't very, let's say, eco friendly. To me, it's eh, but. Take care of your range. Like it's the one place you can go um, that, especially in, in our in my area where I go to the range, they take very good care of it. So and it's a public it's a publicly owned range. So take care of it. Um, don't let it go to waste. Like they spend a lot of the state spends a lot of time and money doing it, and it's a place for everybody to go and enjoy shooting. Don't leave it a wreck for people to go out and then spend a lot of time fussing because you shot the roof over the over the benches or you shot something like I've seen people shoot because at the 50 yard line on one of them they have a top railroad tie stack and then a dirt berm on the back side um, just to keep it steady. I've seen people like shoot a hole like they'll staple the targets to the railroad, the railroad ties and they'll shoot a hole in it and then someone will put Tannerite or something in there and then blow the railroad ties up. Like, why are you doing that? It's it's publicly, why are you destroying, you know, the range? So, anyways, um, try not to go on tangents here, but I end up doing. Anyways, the next thing I keep is I have this handy dandy four mag pouch. Now this will fit AR, AK, G36, whatever. Um, I just have a couple AR mags in here. Um, you got a nice pace for your morale patch. Um, everybody knows only the cool kids have morale patches, so I'm sure or you can see I'm not a cool kid. But I do have, or it does come with um, webbing on the back to attach other pouches and whatnot, and it's got a shoulder strap. I don't really ever use it. I just take it, lay it down next to where I'm shooting on the bench, um, and just pull it from there. Um, this is also made by Midway USA, um, but there's a lot of companies that make them just like that, make 
range bags. So user preference on that. These aren't really necessary. I just like them because it keeps it nice and organized in this pouch and it fits, uh, which is nice. The other thing, um, which is the pouch itself, is you've got spaces for your handgun mags. Uh, not a whole lot of range bags that I've seen actually have this built in, but it's been a while since I've actually looked because like I've got this one and I haven't really wanted to upgrade or looking to get another one. And so last time I looked was about, well, actually before I got this one, this was the only one I found with uh, pistol mag pouches in it. So it's really good. It holds uh, right around a dozen mags. Um, it doesn't matter whether, the, whether it's a double stack like this one here is a uh, double stack uh, P320 mag. Um, it'll fit 1911 mag, CZ, Beretta, Glock, whatever. Um, so it's a very, very easy to access area to keep all your pistol mags. So that's it for the bag itself. Um, Overall, like I said, I've had this bag about 10 years. I really like it. I haven't really seen a need to update. I don't have anything fraying on it. None of the seams are coming undone. Um, the only thing that broke was the one of the hooks for the shoulder strap. But other than that, like, it's, it's a good range bag. It's fairly decently priced. Last I looked, they were about, I'm gonna say right around 70 bucks. It's not bad. It's it's really well worth the money. I really enjoy this. I really like this bag. Um, so, yeah, get a range bag. They're worth it. Um, but anyways, moving on from the bag to the final pieces of the puzzle. Um, the other most important thing that you want to keep by your range bag is a good rear bag. Because whether you have a front rest or not, you've got the bipod. Um, so you have a bipod and you'll have this to rest the rear of the gun to hold it as steady as possible to make sure when you're sighting it in, you've got a good, steady platform to shoot from to make sure you're being consistent and get the shots to land where you want them to. Now, trigger control is going to play a lot into that, but we're not going to get into that in this episode. Um, another thing, I usually keep it for convenience. Um, it's a front stand. Um, both of these are Caldwell products. Caldwell's reason, reasonably priced. Um, you can pick them up at a lot of outdoor stores. You can pick them up a lot of places online. I got these from Bass Pro Shops. I have one local to me. So it, it works. Like they got them. They're reasonably priced. Pretty good quality. I'm going to use them. Now this one did come with a um, handgun rest as well. I don't have it attached. But this one I got. Another thing, especially for hand loaders and making cleaning up brass easy, especially when you're shooting an automatic like a, an AR or an AK, and I'm not using automatic like machine gun automatic, I'm using automatic like a self-loading rifle in the traditional sense or a semi-automatic, um, which most people have. Not everybody's got their SOT and can get machine guns or have the money to get transferables, but that's another discussion on its own. Anyways, this is another Caldwell product. This one's fairly easy. Um, it's just a brass catcher. Uh, you use this piece right here to strap on right at the beginning of your rail or hand guard. And then your main opening right here just sits over the ejection port. So as it comes out, it automatically gets flung right into your bag. It's got a zipper on the end so you, so you can just open it up and dump it into the brass bag over here. Um, but this thing will hold about 70, 80 pieces of brass before it gets full and actually causes uh, malfunctions. But these are real cheap, like 10, 15 bucks. It's worth the money to have, especially if you clean up um, if you're shooting off the bench. Now, when you're doing out like competitive shooting where you're actually moving around and you're probably shooting, especially at like two and three guns where you, where you may be shooting like 60, 70 rounds of, uh, stage, yeah, don't worry about this. There's, they're gonna, the ROs and people working at the range are gonna be doing cleanup anyways. Um, not saying you shouldn't mind your mess, but this is gonna end up being more of a hindrance than anything in that kind of situation. But, and the last, the final 
and most important thing that you might want to carry with you when you go to the range. Your companion with you. Sometimes you got to go to the range by yourself and it's going to be empty. And sometimes you just might be feeling a little down when you're at the range. This will make you feel better. Companion cube is always, always a good companion to have at the range. I mean, look, it's even got a little heart for friendship. So, anyways, that's everything that I usually carry to the range with me. Um, outside of, you know, your gun case, your gun. So, um, this is just a basic list of things. Some people like to carry other things. Like, they tailor, you know, you can tailor it to whatever you feel you should carry with you to the range, but these are some basics I think everybody can start with. Um, the, the only things that I would really consider absolutely mandatory, small toolkit, um, ear pro, eye pro, and everything else is up to you. But yeah, that's, um, well, that's it for this episode. Um, the next episode, we are going to go into target setup and sighting in a rifle that you plan to shoot with. Um, we're going to be doing magnified optic. Uh, we're going to be doing my deer rifle. I've got, I took the scope off of it, ended up selling it. Um, and I'm going to be getting one here shortly to put on it and I'm going to need to zero it. So you guys are going to come with me for that. And we're going to go over the basics as well as the four rules firearm safety, which I'm not going to get into here. But anyways, thanks for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, go like us on Facebook, go give us a subscription on YouTube. And um, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you in the comments. We're not going to moderate them. Go wild. Um, and thanks for tuning in. See ya.